Hey, Dirt Farmer Jade from DirtFarmerJade.com. Have you ever wondered where those wasps go in the winter? I've got an answer for you, stick around. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. If you're like me, you end up with wasp nests around your place. And in the spring, we'll visit this topic again and kind of go through the cycle of wasps, what they're doing when, and how to better control them. But for today, we're gonna to take a look at where the wasps go in the winter and then how they come back in the spring. And what we're actually talking about is the life cycle of a wasp and a wasp colony. Now we're specifically talking about yellow jackets because yellow jackets are the most common wasp that you're likely to encounter. And there's slightly different variations on them. Some of them build this open type nest that you see here suspended under the eave of the roof. Here's an abandoned nest at the end of the season, but you've probably seen this kind of nest before. A related one is where there's a nest like this, but inside of a shroud that's a paper mache shroud. These nests are literally made of paper mache. That is chewed up wood fiber, cellulose, and wasp saliva and they construct all the structures of the nest, whether it's this type that it is exposed and they can literally be under an eave. I found them in bushes and trees. Uh, and, or you can see the kind that have a whole shroud around them that better protects the nest uh, for the wasps. Now, what happens in the winter? These are social wasps, meaning that at least during the warmer months, they tend to congregate and collaborate to create a whole colony. When it turns cold, they tend to become more solitary, sometimes out of just practical need. But where do they go in the winter? Well, if the colony can find a space like they did here in the shop that we were building, the whole colony will move into a gap or a crevice and just go on what's called diapause, which is a kind of a wasp hibernation where all the metabolism is very low, they don't eat, they don't move, their respiration rate is very low, and they are very sluggish because they are cold-blooded. So they'll move into a cavity and just wait out uh, for the weather to warm up in the spring, and they become very active around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So they'll move back out and start another nest. Now, many times, the entire uh, nest cannot survive. It can't find a suitable place to hide. And so you'll find individual wasps and it is the fertilized queen that goes and finds a crevice, a place in the ground, uh, a pile of leaves, or a lot of times we find they're in our wood pile. And you can see right here, a queen, a fertilized queen that I found in our wood pile. I put her out in the sun for a moment then I moved her in the shop here, and from start to finish, she was warmed back up again and disappeared in about 10 minutes. And you can see her get a little bit active as time goes on. At the very end where I put a pencil to her and move her around a little bit, I walked away, came back about 10 minutes later, and she's gone, meaning she's somewhere here in the shop waiting to attack me. I'm not worried about it. We'll make sure we'll take care of her when the time comes. So that's what happens with a wasp over winters. Now, the rest of the cycle, here's what happens in the spring. When the queen emerges, she is pregnant. She was mated uh, in the past season, and now she emerges, and the first thing she does is find a suitable spot to build a nest, and she builds a small starter nest that probably has five to 10 cells. She puts eggs into them, and about 30 days total, she now has five to 10 sterile females that are worker wasps that now take over building more nest structure onto it and foraging, gathering in uh, the food that's needed to feed those eggs that become larvae that now develop into wasps. And they're gonna need both proteins, which are other uh, insects, Sometimes it's the meat from the barbecue that you've got going on. They're very persistent. They want to get around that meat. 
Um, sometimes it's sugary substances, but they bring back all this fuel. And about every 30 days, there is a large flush of, of more wasp, and that nest can get quite sizable. You also see nests sometimes that are very large. Uh, I've seen some that are approximately, oh, this wide and about, uh, excuse me, this long and about this wide up under an eave of a house. It's very likely that's multiple queens that are populating that and they're all working socially to build this large colony. Now, what happens as the season progresses? As the season progresses, temperatures start to drop. And when it starts to get routinely below 70 degrees, they don't function well. And it's at that point, uh, as the season progresses, they also need to regenerate for the next time around. Each queen lives only approximately a year. So during the later part of the season, uh, production changes slightly and a new crop of unfertilized or virgin queens are raised along with drones to inseminate them. So then the drones fly with the queens, you end up with several impregnated queens, the rest of the crop or the rest of the um, colony starts to die off or tries to overwinter, many times unsuccessfully. But those fertilized queens then go into those wood piles, all those protected areas, overwinter, and here's a really interesting thing. The wasp is able to overwinter, not only because of low metabolism, but it generates also a type of antifreeze, kind of a, a, a compound that is very similar to glycol that allows it to sit in a very slow metabolism state and not freeze uh, the bodily fluids in it, and then to emerge again in the spring and the cycle starts all over again. They are very efficient at finding great places to, to hide out. And now you know the secret of where wasps go for the winter. If you found that to be interesting, check out this other video where we tell you how to control uh, pocket gophers, which can be extremely destructive in properties and take out a lot of property as well as vegetables you're growing. And while you're at it, check out this other video from a catalog that YouTube thinks is perfect for your interests. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay looking for that queen that's still in here.